Stand firmly on your values and on your beliefs and on your sense of right and wrong. That's all the kids want from you. That gives you authority. So if the kid misbehaves, you can send him to his room and he'll accept it because the authority said so. Many parents today, they're not the authorities at home. But if you're spanking them in order to gain authority, you're an abuser and they're gonna hate you. Don't beat me into submission just because you're bigger. This, this, this is a serious. Uh, why is it that when you were growing up and your parents spanked you, it worked? We deserve it. <laughs> we deserve it. You hear people talk about Oh, my father, he would, ne oh, I could never, if I did that, he would beat me. And it's always a pleasant memory. <laughs> what is that? Look at the kids, who would get away with, I, my oh, my father would never. And, and they're so happy about that. What, what, is, what is that? Again, it's very simple facts of life. The father was the authority at home. If he has the authority and he spanks you, Thank you. you, you've been put in your place. If he sends you to your room, you go to your room because he, he's the authority and he said, get out of my face. <laughs> but if he doesn't have the authority, like many parents today, they are not the authorities at home. So if they spank a kid, the kid is thinking like, what gives you the right to spank me? And he hates you and he rebels and he runs away. But you see, yeah, as you arrested. But if he doesn't have the authority to spank you, he also doesn't have the authority to send you to your room. So either he's the father the papa, the papa, or he's not. If he's not, how dare he spank you? How dare he take your toy away? How dare he send you to your room? So the spanking isn't gonna work, the kid is gonna hate you. You send him to, to his room, he'll hate you there too. He'll just sit there wallowing in his anger and resentment. And, what gave parents authority back then? How did, how did kids know that the father had authority? No lawyers. What, do you have papers to prove it? No lawyers. <laughs> no lawyers. No lawyers. <laughs> how did children know that their parents have authority? So you could say, well, you know, the Ten Commandments. Kids were taught you have to honor your parents. That was part of it. That was part of it. It was also true that politically, the lifestyle, the climate, everybody knew that there are authorities. If the czar says, if, if, if the emperor says, right? if the policeman says, So the father, in some way, borrowed some of the authority from, from the great authorities. Children knew that a father is terrified of a policeman, a policeman is terrified of the emperor, and so on. So the child is terrified of the father. There was a, a hierarchy of authorities. In our, in our society today, there is no authority. The president is a buffoon. The governor is an idiot. <laughs> the principal is nuts. The teacher is horrible. Who? who, who? <laughs> and then the father comes in and says, I'm telling you to... <laughs> oh, you think you're the president? Uh, what, even what if you were? <laughs> I wouldn't respect you then either. 
So there's no, the whole notion of authority is gone. So how can parents today have authority? And children want their parents to have authority. They need their parents to have authority. What can parents do to have authority? So it, it's, it's, a, it's a physical fact. In a conversation or a discussion or a debate in a group of people, the person who is most confident of their opinion is going to have the authority. If you're a little uncertain, if you're not quite so confident of your opinion, nobody listens to you. Okay, step aside. Let somebody who knows what he's talking about. So you gain authority from confidence, certainty. If parents can speak with, a, with confidence, they gain authority. If you have to demand authority or force authority, then you're an abuser. So the confidence that we have when we speak to our children, when we say to a child, that's not right, you shouldn't do that. Are you sure? Are you sure? Today's parents are not quite sure. If I don't let him do that, will I be frustrating him? Will I be repressing his natural personality? Will he end up in therapy for the rest of his life because I didn't let him express himself? We don't, we're terrified. And all the books on child raising and this conversation, what I'm saying right now, is making it worse. Because <laughs> it undermines your confidence. You read a book that says never, never criticize your, then you read another book that says, put your foot down, <laughs> tell him when he's wrong, so who's right? You don't know what to do anymore. So all the books and all the advice columns on how to raise children, stop reading them. Be completely ignorant and raise your children the way your parents raised you. Scary thought? No, because if you make all the mistakes your parents made in raising your children, what is the result going to be? Yeah. Your child will turn out like you. Yeah. Is that terrible? Yeah. The best advice is no advice at all. You're the parent, raise your kid. How? I don't care. He gets only one set of parents. You're it. Do your thing. Raise them your way. There is no other way. But what if I make mistakes? Not what if. You're going to make mistakes. And too bad. <laughs> you know this guy who is suing his parents for giving birth to him without his consent? <laughs> no, you haven't heard? No. It's real, it's real. <laughs> they threw... They threw it out of court, by the way, if you want to know what, what, they threw it out of court because the parents, the parents argued that they were, they wanted to ask his permission. They couldn't find him. <laughs> I didn't ask to be born. What kind of attitude is that? Are you actually objecting to having been born? Is that how bad things have become? Being born is like a punishment? Come on, something is very, something is very off. If we speak with confidence, because children don't ask to be born, they don't deserve to be born, you're doing them one huge favor. And if you're not perfect in raising them, they still owe you their life. Don't apologize ever for mothering or for fathering. 
And no, you didn't do a good job. But it's the only job they got coming. So don't apologize, don't hesitate, don't be confused, don't be terrified. Make them terrified. <laughs> Terrify your kids with your confidence, not with your anger. When you say something with confidence, your kids love it. But if you sound a little hesitant, like, you shouldn't do that? <laughs> Are you saying or asking? <laughs> Put your foot down. Not, not anger, foot. Stand firmly on your values and on your beliefs and on your sense of right and wrong. That's all the kids want from you. That gives you authority. So if the kid misbehaves, you can send him to his room and he'll accept it because the authority said so. Then you can even spank him and it won't do any harm. But if you're spanking them in order to gain authority, you're an abuser and they're going to hate you. Don't beat me into submission just because you're bigger. But if you're more confident, if you're wiser, if you know more about life, and you're concerned for my life, you're the authority. And even if I don't like what you're saying, I can't dismiss it because you're probably right. That's good enough. Good enough to make good children. And then hopefully your children will do the same to their children. So make all the mistakes your mother made Make all the mistakes your father made. Just don't invent mistakes of your own. That's called tradition. <laughs> tradition. Make the mistakes your grandfather made and his grandfather made. But don't invent new mistakes. And the newest mistake is the lack of confidence. According to which book should I raise my kids? Because the books contradict each other from one extreme, the same author can contradict. Remember Dr. Block, Dr. Spock? Yeah. Dr. Spock, not Mr. Spock. Dr. Spock. Huh? <laughs> Benjamin Spock. So he wrote this book about you never spank a child and you always, and then he got a little older and he said, um, spank him. <laughs> Cancel previous book and spank your kids. So now what do you do? He said, you know, a whole generation grew up, according to Dr. Spock's. Yeah. And then he comes along and says, oops, never mind. <laughs> well, a little too late. Mm. Thank you very much. So don't read books. Don't read books about raising children. You're the mother. Nobody will do a better job than you. No matter how bad a job you do, no one will do a better job. So go for it, do it, and let your children have mistakes that they can repeat. See, that's called educating children. <laughs> let me teach you which mistakes you should make with your children. The ones they made with me. Keep the tradition going. You turned out pretty good, so will they. So cancel everything we said so far. Just parent. And you'll never have to apologize for parenting. Where do you get the confidence from? Quote your parents, quote your grandparents. Not something you read in the book. When you quote your parents, it gives your statement so much authority, history, background. You didn't just make it up in the spur of the moment. This is what your mother taught you. And where did she get it from? From her mother. Already you're talking awesome stuff. Children know immediately. Did you just make that up? They feel it. Or like, Wow, where did that come from? Mm -hmm. 
and you say, from my mother. Yeah, it felt, it felt like it was ages old, like aged wine. So your authority comes from your confidence, and your confidence comes from quoting someone, parent, grandparent, rabbi. You're not making stuff up. You're passing it on. Kids feel it immediately. And once you have the authority, the children feel safer. They're in good hands. They become more confident themselves. They become better behaved because they're not so scared and anxious. And they become better students because they know they can always come home to a safe and, and stable family environment. And ev everything just gets better simply because you speak with confidence. So there are no gimmicks. There's just be real. Be yourself. Be real. You got a lot of wisdom from the past. Pass it on. Even if you have to make it up. <laughs> you want to tell your child something? You can just say it. Or you can say, my grandmother told me. She never did. She should have. <laughs> Good enough. Close enough. My grandmother almost told me. <laughs> she was about to tell me. She, she was too, you know, ran out of time. But really, if you quote, you do two things. It gives you confidence, and you enlarge the child's existence. <coughs> Every child thinks that the world began with them. Good. When you tell them, no, 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 no. There was life before you, people before you. You come from a line of people who did whatever. And you let them know whose grandchildren they are. That means that they are more significant. They have a past, a beautiful past, a heroic past. You tell your children about your grandparents, your grandparents are heroes. They survived horrible things. They were good people, despite the world being against them. If a kid can feel proud of his grandparents, you've already got a good kid. A kid with a sense of history, with a sense of proportion, with a sense of responsibility. But the kid who has no connection to his past is a mushroom. He just, no roots, he just came out of the rain. So, thank your parents in your mind. Thank your grandparents in your mind. And know that whatever you taught your children will not be lost. Somehow, it'll be passed on to the grandchildren. And if they know that it came from you, they are richer, you are richer, Life is richer because you've connected the generations. Holiness comes from connectedness. All disconnection, separation is unholy. So the more you get together, the more connected you feel, the more joined a community is, the holier it is. Partner with Rabbi Friedman. Visit itsgoodtoknow.org forward slash support.